Welcome everyone to today's social system mapping deep dive session for uh, today, February 19th, 2024. Your host today, as usual, are me, Christine Kapper, co-founder of Sum Map and Greater Than the Sum, and Care Martner, who's our producer and tech support person. And what we're going to do today is we'll do our usual chat intros in a moment, and then we're going to have a slightly different format from um, I mean, we do a range of formats for deep dives, but this is going to be um, more of a fishbowl format of Diane and I doing some thought partnering around how to socialize the Health Fellows map that we made together last year and just sort of wrapped up in November, December. <clears throat> and so, so it'll be sort of a fishbowl thought partnering conversation to explore her context. Um, first, get you give you guys a little bit of context about the situation and We'll talk, and then uh, after we've sort of done some some shared thinking, um, we're going to do a, a a simple adaptive action sort of approach. But we're going to sort of focus on the what, um, and then we'll open it up to comments and questions that have come up with you. So most of this will be just sort of uh, holding space for me and Diane to think together and being present. Um, and, 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 um, just, I would invite you to sort of listen to what's going on to really understand Diane's context, context and challenges, and we'll, and see what emerges for you, um, to offer to her at the end of the, the fishbowl part. And then, um, we'll do the usual, um, optional post-session half hour. Diane, I can't remember if you're going to be able, are you going to be able to stick around for that? I'm going to stick around as long as there's stuff afoot. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Um, so then we'll also have the informal post hour or half post session half hour as well. Okay, so let's just, um, for those of us who, I think most of you know each other, but there's a couple, including Diane, who might not know everybody. And so let's go ahead and in the chat, um, start with your name, pronoun, location. And then once you've done that, feel free to add a primary network that you're part of or that you're working with. <laughs> I was... Derek, I was thinking your surf shack is a network. <laughs> That's where you are. That's your location. I see. <laughs> but yeah, I could, I was trying to imagine what that might mean. Mm. And uh, Seth has joined us since, since we started. So Seth, we're just uh, doing the chat intro, your name, pronoun, location, and then a primary network that you're part of or working with and then um and this is so a lot of us know each other and then there are a few of you that maybe not everybody knows so we're just trying to get it so that you all kind of knows have a have access to who's present and then what brings you here today Okay. Learning, learning, bunch of lifelong learners. <laughs> At the most basic, <laughs> that's what we all have in common. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. So today's thought partner, so I, um, I, I've already highlighted this, but but we're going to do a different, slightly different format. Um, and so we're gonna, so, so 
today's thought partner, so this is me and Diane thought partnering, is Diane Bessel, who's the chair of social work and sociology and the director of the Institute for Government and Nonprofit Innovation Training and Evaluation at Damon University, Amherst, New York. Um, I hope I got all your titles or I got them right. <laughs> <laughs> it's and, a lot it's a lot I got it <laughs> I did remove some of the extra things after the comments just for for parsing um and we're gonna we're gonna look at um Diane's social system map for the health fellows of the health foundation for western and central New York and I'm gonna um stop sharing for a moment and give Diane let me just see how to get out of here um yeah, a moment to, so Diane, I'm going to invite you to give us um, a little bit of history on the, found, the the fellowship, the foundation, or the, not necessarily the foundation, but the fellowship and, and what, what has like a little bit of this, not, we don't need to go deep because I want to really focus on the, the exploration piece, but um, your role the map, the context, and the history of how you've done mapping in this context in the past. So just a little sure background. Thing. Sure thing. So um, hi, everybody. Good morning. Mm -hmm. And thanks for being here. Um, so the Health Leadership Fellows Program is an 18-month fellowship program that was started through the Health Foundation of Western and Central New York. The primary focus of this fellowship program was to train health and human service uh, leaders, nonprofits, those working in the public sector, um, a lot of health uh, folks, um, training them in the art of collaboration to help them in their roles as leaders within these organizations and really to start to grow uh, greater connections among these leaders within the, the community. Um, if you don't know Western and Central New York, um, we, you know, Buffalo is kind of where the fellowship kind of centers. Um, we have high rates of poverty. We have high rates of segregation. Um, we have a lot of health issues that are found within our community, high rates of, you know, heart disease, diabetes, what have you. And so the Health Foundation really wanted to get these leaders talking together and working more collaboratively, um, developing partnerships, what have you. It's an 18 month fellows program. I was part of the first cohort of this group, which has been around for about 20 years now. And I've stuck around even after my fellowship ended um, because I've been engaged by the foundation to do different projects for them. I did some work around strategic sharpening um, about a few years into their, their work. I've done some evaluations for some programs, but about, oh God, about 10 years ago, they um, brought me into a group with Deborah Meehan and Leadership Learning Community and June Holly to learn about networking. Now, this is something I was interested in prior, um, but they trained me in um, kind of traditional social network analysis, um, which was um, part of the work that they'd been doing. They'd been evaluating the fellows and, and learning whether or not greater relationships had formed, if there were partnerships and collaborations that were coming out of the fellowship. So that's kind of when I brought, brought in kind of my co consultative role. Um, and we have, you know, had a little bit of a lull during COVID and they wanted to come back into kind of the evaluation of the fellowship and the and evaluation, our social network. And um, I wanted us to move into a product that was a little bit more dynamic. We used a product that was pretty static. You'd collect the data, you'd run your map, you'd have this very, you know, beautiful picture, but it it wasn't iterative, it wasn't dynamic, it, it didn't show change, and, and it it really was this kind of one time only. And so um, that's when we connected with SumApp. Um, I had seen the product uh, a couple of years prior at a training and was really excited about the idea of social systems mapping a little bit. Um, and so we're kind of on the very early precipice of this work together. Um, we have just finished kind of an evaluative project, but the hope is that we can kind of take this further and use it much more dynamically um, as we try to facilitate the development of this network moving forward. Hope that helps.
Christine. I can't hear you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I have both mute on my microphone and on my Zoom, and sometimes I do it on the microphone instead of the Zoom. <laughs> um, so when, if, if we could just um, think together a little bit, well, and oh, let me, let me just, um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, and this, this is going to be, um, so this is going to, this is, I'm going to, Diane and I are going to sort of unpack some of these questions or some of these um, just topics together. And um, I'll be putting them into to post-its and, and or Diane can put them into post-its. And then Diane is going to have this board as a reference to come back to. So we'll sort of do a, an adaptive oh, action cycle. Amazing. We'll do some what, we'll do some so what together. Um, and then um, she'll go and do some stuff. She'll figure out something to do. She'll do some of it, but she'll come, be able to come back to this again, just to refresh her memory and sort of maybe think about it again and again. So this is um, this is Diane's um, board. And you can, um, if, and I'm gonna share my screen while we do this. So if, if you don't wanna look at a board uh, and also if you don't wanna, there's no need for you to go and engage in this board, but if you would like to, um, Kara's going to put a link to the board that is the kind of link where you can put comments, but you can't edit in other ways. You can't add post-its, et cetera. Just so if you have thoughts that come up that you want to share with Diane, you can. Um, but I'm sharing it, and that's if that's good enough for you, then don't feel obliged to click on that link at all. Um, and so I wanted to just, before we dig into some of the what's that I want to explore, I wanted to just... Um, touch on a little bit what you know when you talk about weaving the network and wanting um wanting the, the fellows to to collaborate um what do you what is the foundation believe will that will will come out of that or what are they hoping wanting to have happen there so i i think first and foremost is to have um, leaders who have um, other leaders that they can kind of touch base with and rely on. And so first and foremost, it's um, a supportive function to other leaders. Um, part of the fellowship was really getting to, to interact with folks and to have a safe space where people could share kind of their challenges. What are they struggling with? Um, you can't always show that in front of your, your team or your staff. And so having a safe space to, to kind of air that out was really important. Um, so that's kind of on the personal level. But professionally, a lot of the challenges that our nonprofit organizations or our health and human service organizations are facing can't be addressed by a single organization or entity. And so the hope was that um, organizations could find each other kind of like-minded like missions and identifies ways that they could work better together, right? So if you're really strong on kind of engagement or social marketing, or, you know, you, you really have a great connection with a population and maybe my organization doesn't, but we need to be reaching them. So those one-to-one -one type of connections, but then ultimately how do we solve some of the greater challenges within our community, right? So having organizations work collaboratively to address, you know, the issues of poverty or the issues of, of underemployment, affordable housing. Um, and this became even more of a, a call during COVID, right? So like, you know, obviously things coming up fast and furious during COVID and, um, people had limited resources, but if we could connect those resources together in order to address community problems, that that could lead to real and lasting change, systems change even. So there's there's kind of that layer of it as well. So the idea that we could start to do some systems change work, working on attacking larger scale issues in the community and doing so um, together. So I, I think it gives you a good sense. And those that idea towards systems changes is a more recent piece of the puzzle for the foundation. Um, but it, you know, kind of has been there 
all, all along. That's great. So I tried to capture in 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 summary form. Did did I capture? If you look at my post its, do they? Yeah. Do you feel yeah. like they do justice? I think so. Okay. If anything more comes up, feel free to 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 come back to this and say, oh yeah, here's another purpose. Yeah. There. Okay. So then the the one piece of homework that I asked Diane to do to get to prepare for today was to to come up with a list of the touch points, the places where um, there is some kind of formal either convening or outreach, such as a newsletter um, or whatever all the places that the 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 foundation is uh is touching the network the people in the network themselves um to, to do network weaving so um sure. and you'll just go you can go ahead and say them and i will put them in post-its and uh, then i might ask you to expand a little bit on some of them Okay, so, you know, from the very beginning, when they started the fellowship program, they established the FAN, which is the Fellows Action Network, which is essentially an alumni network. And over the years, um, they have provided a variety of supports to this alumni network. Um, that included, um, so there's weekly newsletters that are providing you know, updates about things that are going on in the community. There's some interesting articles on leadership or, you know, challenges within a sector. It's a place where people can share what's going on with them. Um, there is a website as well. So um, <laughs> it's a content. Yep. Um, so there is a website and the website mixed results from the website, but it is intended to be a place where, you could have discussions. So somebody ideally could share an issue that's going on and, um, you know, get some feedback, sort of sort of like this type of a, a discussion space. But I will say that um, the, the work around that has been pretty, pretty limited. Um, there are also, so the, the fan connects with the current health fellows, so the folks that are currently in the program through some training. So the, the alumni are invited to come to um, current trainings that the fellows are having on topics of interest to them. And so they get to act and interact. It's really one of the first places where folks that are going through the program start to interact with the alums. So that's been a piece of the puzzle. And then alums have had uh, recently started to do a little bit of self-activation around some breakfasts um, just to get people talking and interacting again. But again, it's been really pretty small scale um, such that like when fellows interact, they don't always know that they're interacting with other fellows. They, the, the connections are not very strong and very salient. Um, of course, there's always the evaluation. So I, I put that on our list as well. Um, so the evaluation gets done every time a, a cohort of um, health leadership fellows graduates and we do the network maps, which historically have been these static, you know, you collect the data and once the data is collected, it, it, it can't be changed. And so um, people are used to doing the evaluation. Um, obviously, it's been a 20-year process. So some of the folks in the earlier cohorts have kind of skidded away. Um, but we still, this would be one place where we are interacting with them. Um, I think that's probably <laughs> the bulk of what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, I think it gives you a sense of things. So some training, some you know, breakfast, some, you know, the newsletter seems to be something. We used to have an active fan with a steering committee, but during COVID, it, it again skittered away. So there isn't um, a, an activated steering committee right now for the Fellows Action Network. Um, and often the fellows, when they are um, in the program, they're so focused on the program that the idea of that is kind of off in the clouds. 
Um, so now it's just a question of, you know, do we bring this back? What kind of scaffolding and how might we use the tools that we've developed to better um, support this? Cool. Thanks. Yeah. A couple questions. So for evaluation, when you say you do the evaluation, is that just reaching out and getting data from them? Or is there anything you do with the network? I mean, I know you write a report um, yeah. with recommendations for the for the foundation. Is there anything else that happens with, with the, the broader network? Um, I mean, we do multi-levels. Um, so it's evaluating the folks that are coming out of the program. We've also done like focus groups. So that's a mechanism of engagement around that data collection. Of course, there's the network kind of social mapping survey that we developed this time using some app. We've used more static products in the past. Um, but those are the prime, we, we've done key informant interviews in the past, um, but that's that's primarily what we're doing here. Okay. Yeah. And then, so it, um, is it correct for me to guess that um, one, that the results of the, are the results of the evaluations going to, like, is there any, like, is there a presentation to people in the network or does it just get handed off to the foundation and that's done? So we've handed up, we handed off the report to the, the foundation. We're waiting to hear from them regarding presentation. We do intend to share the results with the fellows once we have the blessing of the foundation. Okay. And our hope is to also use that as a mechanism by which we can get them activating a little bit more. Again, having gone a little bit quiet during COVID um, and trying to figure out what are the next steps. Okay, so one second. That's all really helpful. Okay. Um, and then a couple more questions, just the, the um when people are doing trainings together are you saying that the alums do the trainings and the and the and the new fellows are the train like there's alum trainers and new fellow trainees or is this how how are i guess my question is who does the trainings and who coordinates them so of late they've had alums like myself and a couple others to do the training um but it's also um, alums participating in the training. So some are delivering the training and some are just actively participating in the training. And that's fairly new, right? They historically only had trainings for the fellows who were actively in the fellowship program. And uh -huh. it's only been really very recently that they've had alums who both delivered the training and then participated in it. Okay. And then, um, hang on. Okay, yeah. so, and then I, I take it the foundation coordinates that, makes decisions about what trainings to do, and then uh, does the outreach to invite people to do the trainings. Yep, that's correct. Okay, and then with the breakfasts, who's coordinating those? So right now they are being coordinated by um, members of different cohorts. So there's a group of us that have been running the breakfasts, um, you know, planning the location, the topics, you know, doing the outreach to get people to turn up um, and then just doing the logistical support for the day. And then we're going to loop those into some trainings as well. And that's new, right? So that's, that's, um, there's a small pool of dollars made available to support that through the foundation. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. There's lots of potential here, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hope. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's, 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 it's richer than um, um, uh, some context that I, I see. So, or plenty of context that I see. So that's great. So then just um, another, who, who do you, what I'm looking for is like the, the, the chunks of groups that you hope will get value from this map. So for instance, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm what I'm looking for is the users, not necessarily, mm -hmm. this isn't who's on the map. Obviously we want right. all the fellows that ever existed ideally to be on the map, although that's that's a high bar, but that's, that's the goal. So I'm not mm -hmm. looking for who do we want to be on the map, but who 
do we want to use it to get value from it, to be um, comfortable navigating it? And the evaluators? Yes. For so the sure. evaluators, first and foremost, need to be able to generate information. I also think the foundation. So, you know, part of this is giving them access to individuals who might have expertise or interest in areas that align to theirs. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, we would like the fellows, um, both the alumni, but also current participants, and I would distinguish them slightly, um, but to be able to identify other individuals who have shared interests or resources that they could be tapping into related to the issue areas they concern themselves with. So like if you're interested in rural health, which is a big passion area for many of our fellows, you know, could they network around that issue, share interests, expertise, resources around it? So kind of sub networks, maybe on issue areas, you know, beyond. And then I, I would I would also say the the folks that are in the fellowship program are responsible for doing a project. And to date, those projects have kind of come out of the air. And um, some of the concern is that that they aren't long lasting, that they get done and then they get boxed up and and they don't have kind of a living characteristic, not all of them, some of them do. Um, but the idea is that maybe if they were more connected to other fellows that they could have a longer life if they were connected, um, you know, through the fellows and could be taken further. It's not just a project, but something that has legs, that has, you know, possibility of change. Okay. And I, I also would add, you know, other, other um, leadership entities, right? Other foundations that are also wanting to work in this, these issue areas. Many foundation leaders have been trained as fellows. And um, so they could tap into this network and find folks and organizations that are interested as well. So I could see that. So that's just a, a starter list for you. Okay. This is great. Um, so I want to just clarify or get get um, tease out a little bit. So project. So what? So if we think about this as, so the projects. I'm hearing how you would like them to be used, like mm -hmm. they. Uh, and are you saying that? Um, so one thing I'm wanting to distinguish just. Uh, um, to, um, between the who's and the mm -hmm. the what's a sure. little bit, the users is a little bit of the who's and so do are we saying um like this is a clear th these three are clear to me and then this one is more are there specific is it about that the the sub network piece makes it's, it's not a question of is that uh um a useful thing to be aware of it absolutely is and i'm wondering if if that if there's a if the who's need to be everyone who's interested in that interest area or if there's like i'm wondering if there's like a, a population that's closer in that's identifiable that's active in some way that we can label um like sub network leaders or and i i or mm, that, I'm, I'm thinking about that with both of these and and I might be just barking I might just be thinking there's something distinguishable that doesn't make any sense so feel free to just tell me I mean to me it, it, I mean so for example there's there's a great deal of concern about um, employment for folks working with individuals with disabilities and rates of pay so there there's members of our network that that is a core issue for them and so they could be a group of leaders, staff, what have you, that could do some advocacy, some awareness raising, some education around that as a subgroup. So like, that's what I'm saying, like an, an issue area or a topical area. 
and it could be a you know it could be leaders of these organizations but it could also be staff of these organizations because we do have fellows of all kind of experiences yeah yeah so that's what I'm thinking and it could be any number of issues that folks would self-activate on yeah okay I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna I don't I'm know if that helps us. yeah I'm gonna just let us sort of settle around that one for okay. a bit and yeah. see what else comes up so now I'm thinking um, there are, what I wanted to do, and this is not so much um, about your context as it's just, um, I'm trying to think how to do this. Um, purpose supporting activities would be things like, I'm just, so now I'm, 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 I'm asking my own self from, you know, the things that people ask me all the time, what activities could we use the map to generate mm -hmm. that might be relevant? And so what I'm trying to think about it here is I'm trying to uh, sort of distinguish some, some different uh, dimensions of what's, po what's the socializing context for you. And then we'll think about connecting the dots. Sure. So first I'm just trying to create the dots mm -hmm. and we'll see which ones might fit in which places. So the possible purpose supporting activities could be like convening around a topic. Yeah. Um, maybe breakfasts. Yep. Around topic or geography. Would that yep. be a that's an issue here too, yeah. Um, um oops, hang on. Info in in the in the newsletter. Yep. Because right now it's it's kind of general, and this would be a little bit more targeted. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining. Yep. Um. So I'm putting in there info and newsletters, both findings, like the things that you're finding in the map as you're doing, as you're looking at the map. You know, just you and 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 um, Deborah or mm -hmm. things that. Um, you know, so like the, the things that you put in your report, those could be pulled apart into each a different separate message and thrown into the newsletter or other other places where it could be useful. So findings or and or success stories, things that have grown out of the network, the relationship building in the network and or um, connections that were made because of the map, um, invitations to whatever these other things are. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to stop there. Okay. Um, and and then and maybe this is messages. Okay, so I'm just reorganizing things in my head based on these are the messages, findings. You know what could what could constitute messages. I'm yeah. gonna just cop, take that out and make this back over here. <laughs> To me, it's getting more intentional, right? Like we have general stuff, but could we really get people focused in on something and moving? Yeah. Um, okay. So I feel like, is there any stuff that's coming up for you as I'm sort of directing you through this little bit of inquiry around what's on the ground? I've been, you know, like trying to focus on What's real already? What exists already? So that we're not talking about um, coming up with, you know, brilliant ideas that are, you know, there's there's too big a gap between our the current reality and the capacity to do it, and you know, being able to do it. I don't want. I'm not looking for what are huge leaps that require a whole lot of work. I'm looking for what are the the low hanging fruit, the openings that exist right now. Um, so that's what I've been walking you through. Mm -hmm. And um, is there anything that's come up for you that feels like just, you know, intuition pops in, I should say this, or could be seem relevant or could seem utterly um, tangential, but that's coming up for you as we're talking? I mean, the big thing for me is, is again, this notion of being intentional. Yes, we have all these things, but they seem... Um, not deliberate, not not specific to people's needs and wants. And I feel like 
with the products, with the, the Summit product, we have the opportunity to really explicitly say to people like, you know, what do you have to offer? What, what do you need? And, and get real clear and deliberative about that. And then set up, you know, training or information sessions or, or, you know, discussion sessions with the intention of bringing those people together because we know that they have that connection. So like, I love that you say sense making. It's it's using what we have, and we haven't really fully used the evaluation. It's been great, and the board has liked it, and you know the 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 staff have enjoyed it, but we haven't really taken it out for a spin and see what we could do with it. And I think if we were intentional about the issues that our fellows are facing as leaders in our community. It would entail kind of looking at the data, using the data to identify these places, get people who have identified an interest in that in those spaces, and then facilitating or or just creating spaces where they can do the work together. It's it's almost like pre-digesting yeah. things for them. Yep. That's great. That's one thought. Okay. Is there another? So, um, yeah, go ahead. I'm trusting that you're watching what I'm, what I'm writing down. And if you feel yeah. like it's off base or it needs amplification or reframing, you'll, you'll tell me. No, I, I think this is, I think this is right. Okay. But I think back of like COVID, like people weren't using this network to find resources. It was happenstance. It was mm -hmm. after the fact they would be like, oh, I didn't know you did that training too. And what if we used a tool to say, okay, what, what's going on? Who has what? How can we connect people intentionally? Mm -hmm. that, that seems to me a better use. And yep. we've done all this work to bring people to completion of this evaluation, but let's make it living. Yep. Um, yeah. And, and go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. Um, I just want to let the rest of the group know that um, you have, having been part of this network for 20 years and having been doing this evaluation piece, now there's the an opening for them to hire you to do some of this actual weaving work. And so that's part of um, what's going on here is now you're not just an evaluator giving, not just, but you know what I mean? You're not... Yeah. Your role There's is a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> you're not limited to to evaluating and giving recommendations, but now you're in a position to act on some of these recommendations. Or yeah. it looks like you will be soon. So we hope. We hope. We hope. I, I mean, yeah. or somebody, <laughs> not me, but somebody, but really intentionally weaving the network. Yeah. Okay. So we have these touch points and we have, you know, like who. So one of the things that, and, and I don't think we'll do this right now, but I would invite you to, um, if you can hear my cat, <laughs> he's chewing me out and I'm not giving him the proper attention um, at the moment. Um, um, one of the things I would be doing in, in here is looking at, so of the, of the users, which users are sort of um, uh, touched upon by which of these touch points and which users have access to informing these touch points. So who, like I'm, I, I would gather that, that the foundation staff can add stuff to the weekly newspaper newsletter. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, but it's not really for them. Uh -huh. Specifically. Right. It's for the fellows. Right. It's, it's intended for the fellows and the fellows are are asked to contribute to it. Mm -hmm. Contributions are pretty limited and they're limited to kind of a couple folks. So the activation on that has been limited. OK, so yeah. that's a piece of the puzzle that mm -hmm. that, you know, that we don't know, which yeah. is there's a there's a bit of constraint between the weekly newsletter and um, uh, like understanding the constraint between how things get into the newsletter and who has access to getting into them and then thinking which of these user groups can influence that and 
And then which of these user groups would have access to some of this shared sense making? What what so what I'm trying to do is give you some uh uh clues as to how if this were my situation how I would be thinking of I would be thinking where are there clear lines that I you know this person can influence that and can and create you know and and can add some info add some of these kinds of activities or information into some of these touch points what I'm looking for is ways who can insert what into what touch points and then and then pick one or two and think about um what's the pathway I need to create so that these influencers have the piece of information they need to put it to get it into these touch points. So that's one thing I would be thinking about going forward. And then the other thing is um, this, it seems like this, um, the convenings around the topics are really, are really rich, obviously a really rich area, just going into the map maybe it's with the staff, it's with whomever supports these, the, especially the topic convenings at first and finding that the, the ones that are either the most neglected or the least connected or the, the most hot at the moment yeah. and doing some planning around, around that. Yeah. Cause right now it's, it's kind of what they think <laughs> is interesting versus like, what does the network need help with or an assist with or is pressing right like that hot topic um if we could facilitate around that i think the fellows would would be more interested and more inclined yeah um, towards it yeah right now it feels kind of stilted um, yeah 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 and so i think you know the thing that i just you know as as in, in getting ready to talk about this with you this morning the thing that just really came up for me was that your job is going to be to connect the dots. Yeah. And this is a different. So we when we when we look at a social system map, we're talking about connecting up the people, but I'm also talking about connecting the dots that create the paths that help people get the value that that can come from the map and help them become aware of the value that can come from the map. So those are a different set of dots. Yeah. But it's the same, you know, cognitive practice of connecting dots and and thinking about the you know, where, where's the, the, where the constraints will enable you to move forward most easily. Mm -hmm. um, and so these are the other, so, so these are the, the other, this is the questions that were coming up for me as I was sort of putting post-its about the topics, to, mm -hmm. the dots to connect. And I'm going to stop talking now and I want to see it, give you maybe um, a few minutes to just say if anything's coming up for you, like if you're having any new ideas or new questions about how to move forward that has come out of this conversation? So one of the overarching things always is that these are super busy people. Mm -hmm. So how do I, you know, encourage their participation, their activation, while also recognizing it has to be low barrier. <laughs> like, how do I make this as easy as possible for them to get connected to and derive value from in yeah. the process? Right. Like, so like, I want this to be the thing that if they have limited time, that they're willing to spend some time on this in yeah. a host of other <laughs> competing demands. Yep. And is anything, um, are you, are you, getting any ideas about that or any thoughts about amongst these various dimensions do any of them feel like low-hanging fruit i mean i think using the data that's already in we've already collected to start from i think could be part of it but i also like um so when we did the 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 first volley at this, it was dense. It was a lot of information collected. And I'm almost wondering like, can we use like the surveys of some app to just quick updates, like pulse checks on things of interest 
going forward in it. Like we can provide the scaffolding, we can provide the supports and we can identify the people in the room and tap them on the shoulder. We have a fairly modest group as well. Like somebody identifying themselves as an expert is limited in this group. Somebody raising their hand saying, I'm the one to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, if you tap people on the shoulder and you create a space where they can just walk into and yep. share, I think that might be something that would make it easier, but that requires that, that scaffolding, that, that support to make it go. Yeah. Like if they have to plan it themselves or they have to do the yeah. logistical support or outreach, yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. <sighs> Anything else? I mean, that was the big thing for me right now. Okay. So do you have a sense of, um, well, I think what I'll do is I'll open it up and just get uh, ideas or questions from others. And I'm going to stop sharing for the mo moment. Um, and Kara, you can stop spotlighting me and Diane. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> Um, and just see what other people, what th what's coming up for, for the rest of the group. Um, and then maybe we'll save a couple minutes at the end to just see if you have one idea for one teeny tiny next step after we hear from others. So who's got, and um, I'm, my view is a little, okay, no, it's good. Derek. You have a thought or a question? Well, uh, just a no, just a thought is um, um, especially working with busy people in my world, especially in schools. Um, is the good news is people are lonely. Even busy people are lonely. Maybe the busier they are, the lonelier they are. And so we've had really good traction over the last twenty years working with school board members uh, at the local, state, and federal level, um, building coalitions through relation only. And it's very hard to sometimes convince to funders that instead of swinging for the fence all the time, using a baseball metaphor, trying to get home runs, like if I can just get one person at a time to add one person at a time, and if they can keep funding that for me, we will have a coalition in five to seven years. Unfortunately, some of my funders want to fund the home run and have it done in three and I've been fortunate enough that my funders have allowed me to be patient. And I can imagine healthcare professionals worked a lot like school board members and policy and thinking big all the time. Yeah. Uh, last thing I'll say is they are lonely. And if I can convince them that there's some benefit to them being in relationship with other members from across the nation, they tend to stay in the circle and they become my biggest advocates and they become recruiters and I get an exponential growth. So thank you. Nicely done. Thank you. That's really helpful. Anyone else? Questions or thoughts that were coming up for you? I was really intrigued by the project. The cohorts, so it's like cohort members do a project. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that just, that one, um, I was just like, wow, I wonder just how the social system app could give you the what you're looking for the longevity and the sustainability and the um maybe this even the scale no no suggestions i'm just really intrigued by that well and it's it's interesting you say that because there was kind of a wall <laughs> between the the alumni network and the projects historically that that you had to do this project and you had to divine it of your own you know devices and you had all these folks waiting in the wings who had ready projects that they needed help with that they want for their organizations or their collaborations. And um, we weren't taking advantage of it. So the wall has since been removed, but I think the next step is kind of sewing them or, or finding connection together. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Yeah. Jim. Thanks. Diane, I had a question. Um, it seems like the fellowship network is built to support the fellows in their growth, the training, safety, all of those things. 
I will, I'm, I'm, and it sounds like the, the objectives or the purpose for the, the collective are starting to shift that you're trying to build projects that have some legs that contribute. Can you say more about that, about what the vision of the project is for themselves, for the collective beyond supporting individuals? I think historically, again, it was, it was just, you know, getting folks to work together but now the, there's this different spirit in the community around like actual change coming out of these efforts. And there were some around affordable housing, around, you know, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion within healthcare, things of that nature that um, folks were starting to noodle around. Um, but it, it felt big for them because they'd been working on like, let's yeah. develop a service together or let's do some social marketing to like, they, it was more servicey built. And now they're trying to swing out in different directions, which requires kind of more of those coalesce. Let's get thought leaders around a table, kind of where are the breakages, it might be advocacy is a different space that I think the foundation and folks around that table would like to move towards, but I don't think that there's a, a real sense of like how, and I feel like this network could ins insert some supports around some of that to, to do that, that kind of real, I call it systems change or, or structure change um, at the community level. Um, and um, I think, the foundation would love to see this group do that. I think the group has is still in the like, let's just meet each other around the table. Um, so there's a shift, I think, taking place. Yeah, I, I hope that helps. It's just what I'm detecting. Yeah. Any Seth. Uh, thanks for sharing all that, Diane. Um, I'm curious about the the current network itself the fan um for, first of all i just want to get a sense of size like how many people are in a cohort and then times 20 is that with the roughly the it's same about 20 years 360 364 folk that are have come through the program they're not all activated in the network a typical cohort of health leaders ranged from about 28 to about 40 in size. Geographically, um, the bulk do come from Erie County, which centers around Buffalo, but it's the eight counties of Western New York, which gets more rural over time. Um, okay. But like how many are really active? You know, we were hitting about 69% who at least did something in the survey to, to give you an idea. And the older cohorts like myself have, kind of frittered away many retirements many moving out of the field yeah um and and you're anticipating that reducing the friction of enabling people to connect to one another will result in novel collaborations and emerging trends That's which is a reasonable sort of thing to think about but i'm wondering if if um if you have if may if you've surveyed these people in terms of what they want to get out of the network? I mean, you have you anticipate some of that. It's clear that you have some ideas about what, what could come out of it. I'm wondering um, if that's, to what degree that's been expressed by the members themselves. It has been expressed at various points in the journey. Um, the most recent kind of thoughtful, intentional asking that question came before COVID. So I do think that there's some value in like, okay, we're post COVID now, we're in a different world now. The, the desires of the community have also kind of shifted. So I think there's some value in going back out and like, how, how would you like to see this work now? I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. I also think that there's, there's kind of like two, um, there's, there's two sources of, um, I don't know what the right word is. Um, kind of like authority here there's the network itself the cohort the the people who've gone through the program that you're trying to um, help to become more active and 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 self-directed 
Um, there's also the foundation, yeah. which has its own interests and and um, the sense of of you know what it what it wants to get out of this. And um, if you're going to survey folks again for what they want, it's also kind of perhaps an opportunity to uh, re re um, convey the message that they have the power to shape what the network will ask for, you know, like to shape the, the, the joints of knowledge within the network. Um, and it's not just something coming from the foundation itself, which over time might even feel extractive. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna propose we pause here. Um, I don't know if anybody's prepared to do announcements. I don't see, did anybody, okay. So, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. So, uh, next, what am I trying to say? I'm, I'm wanting to transition <laughs> and, and, uh, and finding a blockage in my mind about what to do. Uh, and, and so, um, that's, what's going on. And, in part because Diane, I'm wondering if you can, if you, if it's possible for you to to give a little um, feedback about this process and just say what was helpful, if anything, about doing this together in in the 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 way I sort of walked you through this board and I came up with this in the middle of the night last night, or, you know, as I was waking up this morning and and said, oh, let's do this, and Diane had no idea what I was going to do with her, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was said, I trust you and I'm game. So, so I appreciate that. So a little feedback on what was helpful, what would have been, what would, what could have helped you more? Um, um, so helpful. I always am appreciative of you walking me through it because it, it requires me to kind of think through things. Um, I think the insights that you all shared with me at the end, I'm like, as I was speaking, I'm like, I don't know what they're going to get from this, but I, I got some really important nuggets from you. Like the notion of like busy people are lonely people. And like, to me, that's where we started from is leaders talking to other leaders about what was hurting late leaders, you mm -hmm. know, hindering leaders, you know, obstructing or was working for leaders, right? Like that's where we started from. And so that is important message. I think the the idea that this is their network and they can decide and you know the the fact that you picked up on the extractive extractive nature of the foundation without me really going there, um, I think is spot on as well. So um I think walking through and kind of identifying the players was really helpful to me, but I think your insights from your your seats was probably the most helpful for me. I don't know if that's thanks. That's great. Yeah. So I'm gonna do um we'll stay on Diana and, I, and whoever else wants to, but let's do our goodbye ritual. So I'm just invite everybody to unmute themselves. I'm gonna count down when I get to one. We'll all just give each other our blessings and our well wishes for the day. And then if you're gonna stick around, just don't jump off. But for the rest of you Feel free to go. So three, two, one. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank Have you a all. great day. Have a great day. Thank you.